Okay. Um, there's something weird that happened with the uh, previous practice test. So I redid a new practice test. It's in this email, and I got to record this again because I looked at it, and it's like, there's a presentation mode, and it was, sometimes it was working, and sometimes it wasn't. And it was putting in the, the annotations I was making over the entire test, and it looked really bad. So the content was good, but uh, I need to do that again. Otherwise, you're going to be a little confused. So here we go. Here is the uh, practice test. So um, think of this as four steps. So step number one, this is for calculating area. Identify the shape. Uh, it's rectangle. So R-E-C, rectangle. Uh, step number two. Uh, what is the uh, formula for area of a rectangle? So A for area uh, is equal to, uh, let's see, uh, base times height. Step number three, plug in the values. So step number three, I got to find the base and find the height. So area of a rectangle, any side uh, can be the base. I'm going to choose this side to be the base. So that would be 1.9. And the height is the perpendicular distance between the base and the opposite side, and that would be six. So yes, I have made a long pro or a very simple process into many, many, many steps. Step number four, yank out your calculator and away you go. And remember that the area will be in square units. Let me grab a calculator um, so I can do it just like you would be doing. So let's see, 1.9 times six, and we get 11.4. So A for area, 11.4 uh, square, and this is in yards, so 11.4 square yards, yards squared, YD to the second power. And I'm not going to do this for every single one, but if I check the answers for number one, 11.4 square yards. Okay. All right. Clearing this out, moving on. Uh, I'm not going to do them all, but I'll do one of every shape. All right, same four steps. I shouldn't have erased one, two, three, four, but I did. How about we do this one in red? Okay, step number one, what's the shape? Uh, this shape is a P for parallelogram. Uh, step number two, uh, formula for area of a parallelogram. It's the same as it is for a rectangle. A for area is equal to base times height. Step number three, plug in the numbers. Uh, the base of the parallel can be any one of the sides, but the height has to be the distance between the base and the opposite side. So I'm kind of forced to choose 10.3 as my base. That's the only side I'm given. So 10.3 uh, times the height. Uh, the height is uh, the perpendicular distance between the base and the opposite side. And in this case, that's 3.7. 3.7. Step number four, actually do the calculation. So area would be equal to, uh, 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 grab my calculator, 10.3 uh, times uh, 3.7. And we get 38.11. I believe the instructions, I can't read them right here. I believe the instructions say round in the nearest tenth. Uh, we'll check here in a second, 38.1. And that would be in kilometers squared. K-M to the second power. All right, let's scroll up and see what the instructions state. Uh, it doesn't say, so I'm going to go with round in the nearest tenth. Uh, if there's no instructions, technically you could have gone with round the nearest whole number, uh, and they rounded it to two decimal places. Look at that. And look, there's no, like, um, um, sometimes they round to one decimal place. Sometimes they round to two decimal places. Um, either one is fine with me. Okay. One shape. Uh, I think there's five total shapes. So three left, uh, triangle. And I erased one through four again. All right, yeah, I get work a little bit smarter. Number one, the shape is a triangle, T R I. Uh, number two, formula, area of a triangle is equal to base times height divided by two. Plug in the numbers, step three. 
Uh, the base could be any one of the three sides of the triangle, but the height must be the distance between the base and the opposite vertex. There is only one value listed there, and that would make eight feet the base. So eight is your base. Uh, your height is 3.5. And we're supposed to divide by two. If you're doing this by hand, I would probably do eight divided by two is four, and then multiply four times 3.5, and we get 14. And you probably already saw the answer from the previous. I'm going to stop looking at the answers. Uh, four is uh, the answer, so area is equal to 14 square feet. There we go, feet squared. Yay for us. Oh, and by the way, uh, you know, sometimes on a lot of practice tests, I give you lots and lots and lots of examples. Uh, these are pretty straightforward. So I'll give you one shape and one example. And just, you know, there, there shouldn't be any confusion. All right. Mm, number four. Oh, it's trapezoid. And I still haven't done this smarter. So if you put T for triangle, then you can't put T for uh, trapezoid. So TRA, TRI formula. This is the, the largest formula we do. A for area. I'm going to write it in calculator-friendly form. So height times base one plus base two. Close your parentheses. Why are you not writing? There we go. Divided by two. Plug in your numbers. Step three. The two bases are the two parallel sides. Two parallel sides are 1.5 and 3.5. And the height is the distance between those. And that would be 1.4. So 1.4 times... Uh, 1.5, and it doesn't matter the order that you write the two bases. 1.5, you just need to add them together. Oh, my word, that was horrible. 1.5. Sometimes it kind of locks up. Plus, the other base is 3.5. All divided by 2. All right. This one, you have to do the inside parentheses first. Uh, well, I mean, if you type in a calculator, type it in exactly the way it appears right here. Um, so that would be 1.4 times open parentheses, 1.5 plus 3.5, uh, all divided by 2. Plus, uh, times two, 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 divided by 2, and I'm getting 3.5. So final area, 3.5 square units. And the units are miles this time. MI means miles. Okay. And as always, if you'd like, you can check your answers. 3.5 square miles, number four. All right. What shapes do we got left? Uh, we've done trapezoid, we've done a parallelogram, a rectangle, we've done triangle. We have skipped, and there's a couple extra ones here for practice. We have skipped... Uh, rhombus. I know I have a rhombus question here somewhere. Where's my rhombus question? Where's my rhombus? Oh, right there. I skipped around. It's number 13. Let's see. So 13 says, uh, what is the area of a rhombus whose diagonals are 10 and 12? Well, it already tells us it's a rhombus, so I don't need to write 1, 2, 3, 4. I just need the formula. So, so a formula area of a rhombus, remember, right? Uh, I write it in uh, calculator-friendly terms. Diagonal 1 times diagonal two divided by two. Okay, I'm gonna be cheap here and just do this one quickly in my head. 10 times 12, those are the two diagonals. 10 times 12 is 120. 120 divided by two is 60. Do they give us units here? Uh, they don't, so 60 square units. 60 square units, number 13. Do I write 60? Well, oh, I didn't put units there. Oh, the answer sheet is wrong. It doesn't have units. So 60 square units. Okay. Back to the order that we were doing them. The next major thing is question number nine. And it says, 
just find the missing missing measurements, round your error answer to the nearest tenth. So now they're telling us round the nearest tenth. So this is done, I mean, quite similarly as the previous ones. Um, identify the shape. Uh, it's a rectangle. Uh, R for rectangle. Uh, plug in or uh, write the uh, formula. Let's see. I'm told this is area, so we need the area formula. So area is equal to base times height. And then plug in what values you know. This time we know the area. So the area is 120. Uh, the base could be any one of the four sides. So the only other one that's listed is 10. So I'm going to call that the base. And the height is the other measurement on a rectangle. And this type, it's unlisted, so I'd put x. Four, solve the equation. Divide both sides by 10, and we get 12. And 12 would be for the unknown. Why did I use x? I should have used h. So 12 is the height. All right, I apologize for writing. Let's make that an H. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using X. That's perfectly fine. So that is the unknown measurement there, 12. 12 uh, feet. So uh, feet. I ran out of space here. Uh, if you don't know, one tick mark means foot, two tick marks means inches. So that would be fine as well, too. Why isn't it in square units? Well, because we're not measuring area. In this case, we're measuring one of the dimensions, the length of the width or the base of the height. I'm not going to do all of these one. It's, they're done similarly. Uh, let's do a challenging one. I don't know. Trapezoids are usually the most challenging ones. All right. So let's see. Uh, this boils down to the area formula. So area of a trapezoid uh, is equal to, I'm writing calculator friendly, H times base one plus base two. and all divided by two. Plug in what we got. Well, it tells us the area is 82.2. It tells us the height is 10.4. Uh, it's a right trapezoid. That's a horrible 10, but you get the idea, 10.4. Uh, base one is, we'll call it 4.7. And the other base is unknown, so we'll call that plus base 2. And all over 2. Now it's just a matter of solving this algebra problem. I'd get rid of the 2 first. So times both sides by 2. Let's see, uh, 82 times 2, or 82.2 uh, times 2 would be 4, 4, 164.4. And that equals 10.4 uh, times 4.7. I'm getting finger cramp right now. 4.7 plus base 2. Right? Okay. I think the easiest thing to do right here, don't use the distributed property, is just divide by 10.4. You could do the distributed property. It wouldn't be wrong. Be a couple extra steps. So divide both sides by 10.4. I sure hope that's divisible evenly. Let's see. Calculator time. Uh, 164.4 divided by 10.4. And it is not. We get a, a, a weird, weird, ugly uh, a decimal. And uh, that decimal is, I'll round to, I'm going to round to two decimal places here. I get 15.81. Okay, so I get 15.81. Now, why did I just round to two decimal places, not one? Because you, uh, for final answer, we'll round to one. And I got to use, oh, that's horrible. Uh, I got to use the approximation symbol. There we go. That's as good as I can get. And what are we left with after we get rid of the 10.4s? We're left with 4.7 plus base 2. So all I need to do now is take that answer of 15.81 and subtract 4.7. And I get, I'm around in one decimal place, I get 11.1. .1. So base 2, after I subtract 4.7, and it's approximately still, it's not equals, we did some rounding, 11.1.
And where are the units here? The units are feet. Only like feet today. So 11.1 feet. So when you do a complicated one like this, this is where you really just need to check your answer. So 12, we're getting 11.1 .1, and 12 is 11.1 .1 feet. Okay, confidence restored. So I'll let you have fun with the rest of those. They're all done exactly the same way. Let's pick up on number 14. Ooh, here we go. Regular polygons. Uh, remember for all regular, only for regular polygons, A for area is equal to uh, a, P, or P, A, it doesn't matter how you write that, divided by two or one half A, P, or P, A. A stands for the apothem, P stands for the perimeter. So let's look at 14. Hey, we need the perimeter. Uh, the perimeter is, well, one side is 18.5, and there's what? That's a hexagon. There's six of them. So 18.5 times six would be 111. So that P value right there is 111. I just need the apothem and divide by two. So what is the apothem? Well, lucky, lucky, this is the apothem right here. Remember, I'll do this in blue. You have three parts to these regular ones. You have the radius, you have the apothem. I'll do this dashed, usually it's dashed. And lastly, you have a side measurement. They're gonna give you one of those three, or in this case, they gave us two. Uh, so I just need to multiply the apothem times the perimeter, and the apothem is 16. Hey, no math there. So it's just 16 times 11 times, uh, divided by 2. And I'm getting 888. So, and I should put that A for area. Capital A, not little a. Little a is apothem. So A for area is equal to 888. And there are no units. So units squared or square units. I'm gonna do U to the second power, units squared. Okay, check your answer on number 14, triple eight. 14, 14, 14, look at that, triple eight. Notice they didn't put units, we're better than them. All right, uh, some of these uh, regular polygon ones are a little bit more challenging. Here's one, 15. Remember, they're either gonna give us the apothem, the side or the radius or a combination of them. All right, so let's do one where they only gave us one measurement. Do you remember how this done? We draw the triangle. There's six of those triangles inside here. And if we divide uh, 360 by the six triangles that you could form, we would get 60 degrees. So this angle right here is 60 degrees, but we want to cut. Can I draw a better line than that? I can. Uh, we want to cut that in half or this triangle in half. So that gives us 30 degrees. And this is one of going to be the most special right triangles. So this angle right here is 30 degrees. And let's see if this is 16 and half of that would be eight. We need the apothem. I'll do it in blue here. Remember the apothem is this portion right here. So remember the formula A for area is equal to AP divided by two. I already got my perimeter. Perimeter is gonna be 16 times six. So I just need the apothem. So how can we find that uh, special right triangle? So 30 degrees at the top, we know that for the general one, this side, the short side, the hypotenuse is two of those. So the hypotenuse would be 16 and the uh, apothem would be the short side times root three. In other words, eight, root three. Oh, why couldn't they give us a nice number? But it's eight root three. But it's it's pretty quickly or easily figured out. All right, so let's pull everything together. The apothem is eight root three. The perimeter is whatever 16 times six is. What's that, 96? Yeah, 96. So let's see, A for area is equal to the apothem, eight root three. Uh, times the, come on, you write a three. That's a horrible three, but you get the idea. Uh, times the perimeter is 96. And then we have to divide that whole thing by two. Calculator to the rescue. I don't know if they multiply. I think they do multiply by the square root of three. So let's see, that would be, uh, times eight times 96, and then divide that all by two. And I'm getting about 665.1. 
I'm just typing that whole thing into my calculator. And this would be in square units. So uh, 665.1. I bet they rounded their whole number here. 0.1. Oh, that's horrible writing. And then that's units squared. Woo, getting tired here. So let's check this answer, number 15. I got 665, yep, 0.1. That is the correct answer. All right. Not much left of the test. Um, this says calculate the area, uh, use 3.14 for pi. So these are pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm not going to do this math for you. I'm pretty sure you're capable of doing this one. A for I'll just talk you through it. So A for area is equal to for circles pi r squared. This is just a calculator drill, and there's only one variable here, the radius. Well, luckily for us, we're given 7.9. Toss that in for r. Do 3.1 times open parentheses 7.9. Close your parentheses squared, and you'll get your answer. So how can we mess with you? Well, the only way we can mess with you is if instead of the radius, dun, 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 number 17, we give you the diameter. So all you need to do is take this diameter, cut it in half, and your radius is two. So A for area uh, for number 17, I'll at least do one of them. Uh, pi times the radius. The radius is half the diameter, so the radius is two, and then square it. So that would be two squared. Or you can literally enter in 3.1. 3.14 times 2 to the second power. So that would be basically 4 times 3.14, and that's 12.56. So A for area is equal to 12.56. Does it say around the nearest tenth? So it does. So 12.6, that'd be 12.56, uh, mile squared, mi squared. So 12.6 square miles. Number 17. Number 17, where's 17? Oh, yeah, there we go, 12.6 square miles. Yay for us. We only have two concepts left, and that's uh, arc length and sector area. Both of these questions say leave in terms of pi, so luckily for us, they don't want to measure, they want to multiply by pi. We just leave pi as pi. So let's see, um, uh, arc length, A-R-C, that's not area, but a arc, so arc L, arc length, is that formula, let's see, X, where X is the central angle, or the arc measure, over 360 uh, times 2 pi R. Remember, for arc length, it's 2 pi R, and the only thing that changed with the formula for sector area, it's pi R squared. Okay, so I need the radius, and I need the arc measure. Well, looky, looky, look, there's the angle, and there's the radius. So we got everything we need. So let's see, that's 45 uh, over 360 and two pi r. So two radii would be 30, so times 30 pi. I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Two times the radius, the radius is 15, that would give me 30. And don't forget your pi. All right, let's see if we can do some re reducing. Uh, 30 goes into 360, what, 12 times, right? Is that right? 30 times 12, right? 360, 360 divided by 30, it's 12, so 12. Anything going 12 and 45? Sure does, three, that's a lot of crossing off. Uh, I'm sorry, three, three goes into, you change that to a four, three goes into 12 four times, and three goes into 15, 45, I'm saying the answer, 15 times. So we get 15 over four times pi. And I bet that's going to be the answer unless they actually divide 15 by four. So let's check their answer. Uh, you can divide 15 by four. It just gives me a decimal. You still need to leave the pi there. What number did I just do? 20. Uh, number 20, do, 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 where are you, 20? Uh, oh, yeah, look at that, 15 pi over 4 feet, okay? And remember, why is it in square feet? Well, because we uh, weren't doing sector area. We were doing arc length. So let's do a sector area and call it day, uh, uh, quits right here. Okay, so sector area right here, it looks like the same formula. So A for area, this time we actually are doing area is equal to, it's still that x over 360. 
This time it's not going to be times 2 pi r. It's going to be because it's area times pi r squared. Pi r squared. So I just need radius and I need the angle. And once again, we got both of those. This time the radius is squared. All right, so let's see. Equals the angle is 150 over 360. There's going to be some canceling there. Uh, and then the radius squared, 8 squared is, what, 64? So 64 pi. All right. Let's see if we can do this one without a uh, calculator. How about 150 and 6? I'm going to cancel in red here. Uh, that would be a zero off of this. I'm dividing both sides by top and bottom by 10. Let's see what goes into 15 and 36. Three. Three goes into 15 five times. Three goes into 36. Uh, what? Uh, 12 times. Hey, 12 goes into 64, right? Doesn't it? 60. No, 12 goes into 60. Uh, four goes into 12 and 64. How about that? Four goes into 12 three times, and four goes into 64 16 times. Anything else cancel? Mm, let's see, five times 16 uh, is 80, and I get 80 over three. And I don't think anything goes into 80 and three except for one. I think that's right. Pretty sure that's right. I'm willing to take a bet on that. So I'm getting 80 pi over three, and this would be area. So it will be miles squared. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 22, did I get it? 22, 80 pi over three square miles. I got it right, yay for me. Or yay for us, I should say. Okay, uh, yes, there's 23 questions here. And yes, there's gonna be 23 questions on the test itself. Okay, uh, if I'm feeling... Strange, I might put a geometric probability on the test. So I can't do a practice problem on geometric probability, but just remember the formula for geometric probability is remember P for probability is the formula or the ratio of number of ways that you win the game. Uh, so number of ways of winning or whatever defines winning, how many ways that can happen over everything that can uh, uh, occur. So all outcomes or just outcomes, all outcomes. Oh, I'm so tired of writing with my finger. All outcomes, I'm gonna stop right there. I can't type anymore, or I can't write with my finger anymore. So for instance, you know, what's the probability of rolling a four with one die? There's only one way to get a four, but there's six things that could happen, one over six. Uh, you can leave it as a fraction, you can change it to a percent, either one is fine. And that'll be your probability question. But it'll be a geometric probability, so there'll be a shape. But you you did the homework. You, you know what that's about. Uh, if you have any other questions on this test, just ask me. I'd be more than happy to uh, help you out. But we'll call it quits right there. Sorry for screwing up that first practice test.